Hey everybody, welcome into this week's episode of Tony's Spot on Fishing. I'm your host, Tony Krizek, and today we're in Sweet Home, Chicago. That's right, we're out here fishing Lake Michigan, smallmouth bass. I'll tell you what, if you guys have never done this before, this is an absolute blast to come out here. Once again, it looks like we got storms coming in on the area this morning, so we're going to try to get this shoot in before everything gets going. But let me tell you something, we're going to show you all the tips, tricks, and techniques to catch these fish and maybe even a few surprise bonus fish along the way. You never know with Lake Michigan what will happen. With me today is my buddy Mike. We're going to get to it, get to the action this week. Downtown Chicago, my town, smallmouth bass on Tony Spot on Fishing. Roll. And we're out here in Monroe today. This is our starting point, Monroe Harbor in, the, in Chicago. Right away, right off the bat there, Mike ended up hooking and losing a little smallie, which is a great sign. He actually caught that fish on our Apollo clack and crank. Now the clack and cranks, the shallow diving version, only goes down about three feet. Now in the morning, you can get away with running some baits a little higher in the water column. Depending on wind conditions or directions out here on Lake Michigan will really determine the water clarities. And we've had some west winds and southwest winds, which will actually help push a lot of the dirtier water out. Once the sun comes up, and there are a lot of clouds rolling through right now, but under normal conditions, if we had sunny skies, you could probably see bottom here in Monroe, right along the shoreline area. Now, with the cloud cover, that'll help our, our chances of these fish feeding up on some shallower divers. I'd love nothing more than to be able to throw a lot of top waters out here. Unfortunately, the seagulls really make that difficult as they try to dive bomb a lot of those baits. But I'm actually running the number five jointed shad wrap in the fire craw. Mike's throwing the clack and crank in the orange craw, the rusty craw. So believe it or not, Stuff with a little bit of color to it is what we like. High vibration, a lot of noise to it as well. That really helps bring these fish up. Shallow, uh, shallow weed growth right now, just emerging. Uh, with the shed wrap, I'm actually able to just kind of tick the tops of the weed flats. I know Mike's not having any issues with his. So it's kind of a good one-two punch to come out here with and start with. So we can have one going down about seven feet, one about three. I can comb the weeds, Mike can cover the shallow water just up above it. And we'll put together a pattern here real quick, see what they like. Now, like I said, with hitting the weed tops as we are, you may notice I'll do a stop and go retrieve where this way I can let that bait pause. If I tick a weed, I can just give it a quick rip off of that vegetation as well. Just little things we can do to help induce strikes out here. Well, the rain has sure started up here. Uh, it's making things a little bit more difficult for us. And we've been up and down Monroe Harbor. We've just seen the, the one smallie so far that Mike hooked and lost right off the bat this morning. We played around a couple different lure changes, everything from some lucky crafts, running more shallow divers, thinking fish might be feeding up, uh, of course, the standard tried and true, the jointed shad wrap, always in the water at some point. But right now, these rain conditions are really starting to make things a little bit more tricky. Uh, we got some thunder and lightning detected in the area. So, of course, weather is becoming a, a big issue out here. One thing we'd never, ever want to do is be out in the thunder and lightning, especially the lightning. Graphite rods, water, and electricity just don't make a great combo. But we're not too far from structures here. If things start to get bad, we can duck out of the way and 
get out of the weather and be in a safe spot for just a little bit while it passes through. So as always, anytime you're out here on the big lake, it doesn't matter what body of water you're on, always be smart and be cognizant of the water um, and the weather rather, so you stay safe out there. No fish is ever worth losing your life over. But what we want to talk about though too with Monroe, literally any of the shorelines here through Monroe Harbor, there's good weed flats. They're just emergent right now in the early summer. Crankbaits are about the best bet. And right now we've just been trying to cover water with these storms coming through. What we would like to do is if we get a good break from the weather is actually be able to slow down fish some plastics, uh, Cinco's, wacky worms, finesse worms, uh, drop shot rigs work out here as well. Uh, soft plastic jerk baits too. So, you know, we're at the mercy of mother nature right now. So we're still in that run and gun phase, but if we can catch a break in this weather, we can definitely get on these fish. We know where they're sitting along the break walls and on the, on the main weed flats here. Just need mother nature to cooperate for us and hopefully we can get a few smallies on film. Now this was not on the menu for one of the little bonus fish. But that's a little baby rock bass right there. I mean a baby. Well, that makes you wonder sometimes just what the heck these guys are thinking, whacking a bait like that. But there's a lot bigger rock bass than this guy in here. A lot of times when we're out fishing smallies, we come into a lot of rock bass. And I mean, they're, there's times we'll get them up to almost the size of like a, a saucer. I mean, they're, they're good and fat and thick bodied uh, rock bass, but that was a little guy. So there's one bonus, if you want to call it that. We'll chalk it up as that on a day like this. We got a little break in the weather here, kind of in between systems. The radar's showing some more coming, so we're able to kind of slow down for a minute or two and actually fish some of these higher percentage areas on Monroe. And uh, one of my favorite spots in the whole place, aside from the boathouse area, uh, down in the back corner of it, the most northern region of, of Monroe, is actually this little platform that we're on. It's not too far from the shed, uh, about maybe halfway to, uh, towards the, the fountain, Buckingham Fountain. But it gives you good access to a lot of the vegetation, the main flats out here. These fish will school up alongside the walls both the break walls, the walls of this platform. There's a little cut as well that they'll, they'll fill in on. Nice little weed flat too, just off the point of that cut. So we can kind of slow down and, and fish plastics a little bit through here. These fronts will have these fish a little bit slowed down. The whole run and gun thing is not gonna be the, the best case scenario today. But again, we were against the odds with the weather, so we had to go with that routine. Now there's a few different plastics we can throw when we're down here. Um, of course, tube jigs work very well, a three and a half inch tube. Um, if the weeds are bad, Texas rig it. If not, you can just run a standard tube jig head right up the, the hollow part of the tube. Um, flukes work well, soft plastic jerk baits. Um, we've caught fish on Cinco's, both Texas rig and wacky rig. Craws as well, of course, there's a lot of craws in Lake Michigan. Uh, but one of my favorite things to do under situations like this out here is we'll actually take uh, a little football head with a little weed guard, the little Buckeye jig. And we actually just basically, all we're doing is Texas rigging a finesse worm. This is just a little zoom finesse worm. And we'll wacky rig rather, uh, just wacky rig that little worm like that. Watermelon candy, cotton candy works well as two. We'll also put a little bit of that chartreuse garlic scent to the tail just to give it a little contrast color. And we'll pitch this thing out. We can work it through the weeds. The weeds are very sparse. We can kind of swim it, we can jig it, we can shake it on the bottom and just play around until we get strikes with it. Good options. Uh, smaller beaver baits as well work well. Um, we've caught them on the little three inch beavers like a sweet beaver. Uh, the Bass Pro Shop brand beaver as well has worked very well for us here. So there's just a few baits that you can throw in, in a situation like this. And we run very light weights. That's actually just 1 16th. We want a very slow fall, natural fall. A lot of guys make the mistake of, of running a heavier weight out here, wanting to get to the bottom sooner rather than later. And 
don't get me wrong, we you know you can catch fish that way, but it, the the lighter weights actually work a lot better out here. Just give you that more natural natural fall to the bait. Can work it through the weeds. Like I say, we'll play around with different different lifts different speeds on it. Like I said, we can almost kind of twitch it, kind of get it to work like a jerk bait over the weed tops, punch it through on, on some of the little holes in the vegetation. It's not very thick yet by any means. Water's only in the, the mid to upper 60s. It's just emergent, just a couple, two, three feet off the bottom. Some places, maybe four or five. Very sparse still too. And that's the other thing with this setup that we're running. There's a little bit of uh, training that goes into actually getting these fish on a hook with it because if you do a full-blown hook set, uh, more times than not, you'll actually literally rip a bait right out on these fish. So it's actually just kind of a, an easy set, easy lift up with it. it it's very hard to, uh, to get the hang of it when you're used to just reeling down and, and cranking on one. As soon as you get a bite, just pretty much just kind of lift up. You don't really want to want to hit them too hard. There he is. Need a net. Coming up. Here she comes, here she comes. There we go. Woo! We had to do some work to get that one. We actually switched up, I switched up to a tube. A lot of times when these fish, after these fronts run through, these fish will really get a little more finicky and we were able to actually go ahead and just run a, a tube jig, a three and a half inch tube. We'll show you that setup here in just a second. But that right there, ladies and gentlemen, that is one of the reasons we travel into the city. Big smallies like that. You know, she spawned out already, but uh, good healthy fish. We're gonna go ahead and get her back and hopefully we'll get a couple more here for you. And actually, the way we caught that fish, like I was just mentioning, throwing a tube jig and we're not battling a lot of weeds here so we're actually running an exposed hook to it so we just slide and actually I can pull it out here you can see we tie on but we're gonna actually if we were to do this in real time what we would do is slide this head up the tube first before we were to do anything we poke the head out we tie it on once we have it tied on, we can kind of tuck that eye in there just to protect the knot. Because we're not in real heavy cover, we can run an exposed hook. Now, if we had any kind of real vegetation around here, that's when we would go to, uh, go to more of a, a Texas rig style tube. Three and a half inch tube is about the biggest we'll run. Very rarely do we go to the four, four and a half inch size. Just straight green pumpkin. Pumpkin with a little fleck is good too. Uh, the Strike King coffee tubes are one of my favorites. Got a lot of scent to it. And the smallies love them out here. But real basic rig, just jigging them up. We just switched over to, I just switched over to the tube. So there was a nice Lake Michigan smallie. Like I said, big storms. We had some rain, thunder, a little bit of lightning. And we had to keep kind of dodging this stuff. Our crankbait bite just really kind of fell apart on us uh, after the real early morning. So that's when you know you gotta slow down. Couple of missed fish, few bites on that, uh, that wacky worm, the finesse worm, wacky worm. But it literally took going to that tube jig, fishing it real slow, just actually kind of hopping it on the bottom, long pauses. She actually picked that thing up off the bottom. Kind of imitates a goby or a craw even for that. Uh, two main forage bases that the smallies are feeding on heavily here. Let me see if we can't get her to come back. What we've done is we've actually moved out back onto the main lake out of the harbors here. 
and uh, wind has shifted three times probably in the last oh, hour or two. And uh, right now we're kind of limited. We really can't continue on that finesse type pattern out here on the big lake. And we've actually gone back to the crankbaits, literally had that one just follow in. Looked to be almost about the same size as that one we caught on the tube jig inside Monroe. Well, everybody, that's about all the time we have for this week. <laughs> Mother Nature sure gave it to us again, didn't they? Uh, the wind has shifted again. It's, it's almost a hard east wind now. As you can see, it's really almost become unsafe to, to fish from shore out here. And when it gets conditions like this, it's about time to just pack it up and, and head on home. But, you know, being that today is June 26th, um, you know, we're just a few days removed from those real big storms back on Wednesday. And we had another little front roll through this morning, three wind shifts, three or four wind shifts. Unreal, uh, just what the weather has been doing to us. But hey, you know what? We were still able to make it out for a few hours this morning. We were still able to show you how you can come out and catch some of these fish, even in this weird weather that we're having. You know, be versatile, crankbaits, the jointed shad wrap, the number fives, uh, clack and crank from Rapala and the shallow diving size, soft plastics, that wacky worm that we showed you with the finesse setup, and also a tube jig, of course. Unfortunately, we can't give you any more this week, but we can't wait to come back and do it all over again next week. I don't know where we're fishing yet, but keep checking our Facebook page find out exactly where we are at and for all the info on all upcoming episodes do us a little search on facebook spot on fish and you'll find us that's where you can stay up to date also of course continue to subscribe to our channel youtube.com slash tony spot on fishing where you can get alerts to your emails when new episodes launch once again my name is tony krizek we'll see you next week on tony spot on fishing